Good afternoon, everyone. As Jonathan said, today we're going to provide some information on the CCMR verifier and the CCMR tracker. At the end of the presentation, we will answer any questions you may have. Today's webinar will discuss what the CCMR verifier is, what dis why districts should use it, and how to use it. Towards the end, we will briefly look at the CCMR tracker and then we can answer any questions you may have. The CCMR verifier is not a new concept. Instead of using Excel spreadsheets like last year, this year's corrections can be made in TEAL. Corrections can be submitted through the TEAL accountability application for the 2018-19 annual graduates as well as non-graduating 12th graders. The deadline to electronically submit documentation for updates to student records is October 1st. As a reminder, the verifier can only be used to correct non-PEAMS indicators. Why is it important to use the CCMR verifier? Data accuracy is the foundation of accountability and funding. CCMR data impacts outcome bonuses, potential small numbers analyses, and the 1920 taper. Additionally, CCMR data may be used in future accountability ratings. To ensure accurate ratings, funding, and public reporting, it is imperative that districts verify the accuracy of their CCMR data. How do districts use the CCMR verifier? If your district does not find any errors or discrepancies and does not wish to request any changes, then no action is required. If your district does find discrepancies, you must request a change and provide supporting documentation. Again, CCMR indicators determined by TSDS PEAM submissions are not eligible for corrections and will not be shown in the CCMR verifier. Once you've arrived at the 2020 CCMR webpage, click on the CCMR Verifier Application button. For more information, use the Click Here button circled on this slide. This is the CCMR Verifier landing page. First, you will need to select your high school campus from the high school campus list on the left. This campus list will only be populated with 2018-19 high school campuses with 12, grade 12 students. After clicking on your campus, the list of 18-19 annual graduates plus non-graduating 12th graders will populate on the box in the top right. Next, you can sort the list by clicking on the CCMR Met column header on the top right. This will sort the list to only students who have not met CCMR requirements yet. To view a student's information, click Edit on the far left column. Clicking the Edit button will load the student's information below. If you wish to correct that student's information, use the Student Selected form seen here inside the green box. After entering a requested score change, the value will be checked for validity. If the value entered is outside the acceptable range for that assessment, an error message box will appear. For example, if a score of 100 is entered as an ACT math score, an error will appear. If you see an error message, click OK and enter a score within the acceptable range. Once you've entered a requested change value, the Upload Support Document button will become enabled. Your request to change the student score will not be recorded until after you've uploaded supporting documentation in PDF form. To upload supporting documentation, select the Upload Support Document button, then choose, then select Choose File. As a reminder, you will need to upload your document as one PDF, even if you have multiple scores or multiple documents to upload for one student. Multiple pages will need to be saved as a single PDF file. The file size cannot exceed 16 megabytes. Performance reporting staff will examine the requested changes before a final determination is made and will contact district staff if there are outstanding issues. Once you've selected a file, click, click Submit to complete the upload. After the file has been uploaded successfully, click the Confirm and Proceed button. 
When you've completed uploading the document, click the Submit Requested Changes button to record the change and finish submitting the audit record for this student. After you've submitted the change request, a pop-up window providing a basic report of the updates will appear. Close the pop-up window to return to the landing page. To view the status of your requested changes, click the first hyperlink titled Current Status of Requested Changes. This slide provides the change request for student Keith Cranford. As TEA staff review submissions, the change status column will provide you with a current status record for each request. After review, each line will be either approved or denied. Hyperlinks are also available if you wish to download a student listing in Excel or the minimum CCMR requirements in PDF form. Now, Jonathan is going to demonstrate the Excel download and provide a brief overview of the CCMR tracker. Perfect, thanks so much. So uh, we understand that if a campus has more than 50 students, for example, you might not want to go student by student on the HTML uh, screen. And so that's why we provide all districts with an option to download the entire student listing for all campuses into Excel. So you would just select the link here to download that data into Excel. And so once you collect, uh, once you hit that button, you'll receive an Excel download. And on our example campus, we have that campus data here and that campus number tab. You're first presented with a glossary of terms for each of the CCMR indicators. And then when you click on the corresponding uh, CDN for that campus, you'll be given the student level download of all CCMR indicators that you just saw on the HTML screen Additionally, we'll also include other indicators such as the PEMS indicators. Now, although the PEMS indicators like, for example, military or CTE are shown in the download, you cannot correct those indicators. Again, you can only correct the assessment related indicators. But if you have a number of different campuses, uh, for example, and you don't want to go through line by line in the HTML, you can download the Excel spreadsheet and because it's in Excel, you could, for example, filter on the CCMR column and maybe just look at those students where no CCMR indicators were met. Like for example, this one example student, Brian, we see that we have TSIA results for reading and in math. And the criterion score for TSI reading is 351. So close, but no, that student did not meet the criterion score. So if the district knows that this student took another assessment uh, and did score the criterion score, but we don't show it here, then that district can then go back to the HTML screen and upload the latest copy of the TSIA assessment. Additionally, on that HTML page on the bottom left, there are links for a PDF, if you forget the criterion scores for each of the assessments, there's a quick cheat sheet on each of the criterion scores for SAT, ACT, and the TSI assessment, AP, IB, uh, and level one and on ramps. For additional information on these CCMR indicators, please see the 2020 accountability manual. Okay, let's talk about the uh, CCMR tracker. Now the CCMR tracker is going to provide districts with an early preview of the CCMR statuses for students who were in grades nine through 12 during the school year 1920. And again, this will be available on August 17th. So districts will be able to see the CCMR statuses of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors during the 1920 school year. Unlike the CCMR verifier, no corrections will be submitted to TEA for the tracker. The tracker is for informational purposes only. Now, if a district finds errors with a SAT or ACT assessment, for example, for a freshman or a sophomore, they are encouraged to work with those testing vendors to make those corrections to the assessment file prior to the student's eventual graduation. 
We will have additional training materials on the CCMR tracker later in the month. If you haven't already subscribed to our performance reporting weekly bulletin, please do so by going to the TEA homepage and signing up for updates. But in TEAL accountability, uh, on Monday, when we have our CCMR landing page for the tracker and the verifier, we will have a link for a district to go in and launch the CCMR tracker application. We will also have a link for additional information uh, by clicking that link in TEAL. And if the district wishes to launch the tracker, they will do so by clicking on the button here for the CCMR tracker. Doing so will launch the application. This is an example of what it will look like. Uh, in this example, the district has multiple high schools. So in order to view data, you would click on the link for that particular high school at the top right. When you do so, the page will populate with data for that selected high school. On the left-hand side, you can see the percent of uh, grade level CCMR met, and there is a bar which corresponds to that state CCMR rate. So you can benchmark yourself against the state rate by grade. And then doing so, we'll also populate on the bottom the grade level data uh, for that particular campus, starting off with grade 12. And if you scroll down the page, you'll see grade 11, keep scrolling grade 10 and grade nine. You'll also be able to see all the different ways the students can meet CCMR. And we'll highlight the column of whether or not the student met one or more of those criteria, yes or no for CCMR. And again, if the district does not want to stay in the HTML page and scroll and scroll and scroll, there will be an option for that district to download the student level data for all campuses into Excel. Doing so, you will receive an Excel download and if you have multiple campuses, they will be here at the bottom and you'll have all your student information available in Excel. Do you wanna highlight the fact that both the HTML view and the data download into Excel will include sensitive student information, such as the social security number, the TSDS ID, the local ID, and the date of birth. So if counselors are downloading the spreadsheet, uh, just please let them know that it does contain student level information and sensitive student level information. Uh, so please be careful if counselors are going to be emailing this to other counselors in the district. 